Hello and welcome once again to Home Bible Study. From my home to your home, this is Robert Haller thanking you for taking the time to observe this video. And always to those that subscribe, view, comment, and respond. Today's topic, Jesus Christ is not your pattern for salvation today. Now, I know this topic or this title of this Bible study will have a lot of Christians, if they view the video, raise an eyebrow or even roll their eyes at something like this. To make such a statement to them probably would be unbelievable or they've never heard a statement like this before. And they sure haven't heard it from their Christian pastors, the Christian church that they belong to, that they attend, their Christian denomination, or their religion of Christianity, for that matter. So why would I make a video with the title of that nature? Well, let's look at Scripture, and we're going to look at it from Scripture's standpoint as to why that is a true statement from the Bible today. Now, I choose my words very carefully when I give a title for a study. And if you'll notice, I said I use the word today, not in the times past and not in the ages to come. But today, it refers to the body of Christ church doctrine in the but now of the cross for us today. But let's make one thing perfectly clear to start with. Jesus Christ himself is salvation. Okay? He is not a pattern for us today, but he is salvation. Within him is salvation. How do we obtain that salvation? Would be a great way to look at it. Now, we're going to show you from Scripture that Jesus Christ today is not your pattern for salvation. Because you will find Christianity teaches that, oh, by all means, he is because of what Jesus Christ taught in his earthly ministry. In the gospel of the kingdom to his nation of Israel, predominantly his 12 apostles while he was on this earth in the times past before his death, burial, and resurrection and ascension into heaven. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. Or pick up your cross and deny yourself because if you don't, you will not have eternal life. And he told you that you must endure unto the end for your salvation and Peter emphasized that in chapter 1 of his first epistle, where your faith is the end of the cell, your salvation of your soul. It's to finish work, to endure unto the end. So in the gospel of the kingdom message, which was under the law, which was Jesus Christ's earthly ministry to the nation of Israel, to his lost sheep, yes, he was their pattern. Absolutely, that's undeniable. And he told his nation of Israel everything they needed to do in order to have salvation by following him. So he was their pattern. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. But when I said, for today, Jesus Christ is not a pattern for my salvation today. And I'm going to let Scripture tell you that. You aren't going to be hearing it from what you think I believe, because it doesn't matter what I believe. It matters what Jesus Christ says in Scripture, from the Jesus Christ of Scripture. See, I'm going to take religion out of the way. I'm going to take Christianity out of the way. I'm going to take mankind out of the way. And I'm going to take Satan out of the way. Because you see... With Christians in the realm of Christianity's religion and the Jesus Christ of Christianity, 
will tell you he is your pattern for salvation today. And you need to be reminded that back in Jesus Christ's earthly ministry, weren't the religious leaders of those days, the scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees, thought they had eternal life because they worshipped their only one and true God, and they thought they were serving God, the God of their scriptures. When Jesus Christ told them to their face, you are of your father, the devil, they did not realize they were serving a false God. They were serving Satan instead of the true God that was in heaven. And that's where Christianity falls short when they think that Jesus Christ of Christianity who claims to be the Jesus Christ of Scripture, too, by the way, is their pattern for salvation today. So we're going to start and look at why Jesus Christ today is not a pattern for my salvation or for anybody's salvation in this age of grace that we live in today. It is the doctrine for the body of Christ church. There is one that is a pattern for us. Because I explained to you that Jesus Christ is salvation. Within him is the salvation. So he cannot be a pattern for us if salvation lies within Jesus Christ, which it does for the body of Christ church doctrine today. And we're going to go to 1 Timothy. That's where we're going to start today. And it's a verse I'm sure you heard before. But when it comes to a study like this, it's imperative. It's one of the true verses that backs up the title of this study. Because I'm going to show you in 1 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 12. This is Paul now talking, he says, and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me, for he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Verse 13, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Verse 14, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, whom I am chief. And that's the Greek word protos, which means first. And here it is in verse 16. How be it, for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all longsuffering for a pattern to them which should follow or should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life, just as Paul did. So to say today in the body of Christ Church, as a saint saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the gospel of the grace of God and the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in today, it is by grace through faith that we are saved, yet not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. So the pattern isn't Jesus Christ. The pattern is Paul. Because Paul calls this gospel that he gives and he preaches his gospel five times from Romans through Philemon. He calls it my gospel. The other 12 in the gospel of the kingdom message of Jesus Christ's earthly ministry that was under the law in the times past before the uh, crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. They didn't have that authority, nor did they dare call it their Gospels. 
It was Jesus Christ's gospel back then. And he was the pattern. Today, it's Paul's gospel. He is the pattern. He is telling us everything that Jesus Christ told him to do. And everything that Paul tells us to do comes from Jesus Christ as a commandment from the Lord. Because in the body of Christ church, if Paul is our pattern, which the Bible says he is, then we must obtain salvation by following Paul as he followed Jesus Christ. And he lays it out from Romans to Philemon, what it is we need to do for our salvation. And it's so simplified and it's so easy because all we have to do according to the pattern of Paul is what he stated in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 16. And let me repeat verse 16. He said, How be it, for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to have life everlasting. And that's all Paul did, was believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you will remember in uh, the book of Acts, when it was, I think it was uh, Silas and Paul were in jail, and the Philippian jailer asked them, what must I do to be saved? And what did Paul and Silas tell them? Tell him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy household. where you look back in Jesus Christ's earthly ministry, when he was the pattern on the gospel of the kingdom, they had to believe in the name of Jesus Christ, and they had to believe who he was, he said he was. And they were guilty of not doing that. That's why Peter told them in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 38, what they needed to do to obtain eternal life. Because you remember when when Peter laid out the case against the nation of Israel, the Jews, about murdering their Messiah, they were pricked to their heart. And they asked them, men and brethren, what is it must we do? We, as a nation. And then Peter tells them, repent. Repent of what? Repent because you did not believe Jesus Christ was who he said he was. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you will receive the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Totally different than the pattern that Paul sets for us by just believing through faith on the grace, the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ. Because Paul said, I'm the pattern. And everything Paul tells us is a commandment from the Lord because when he told us in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, by the commandment of the Lord as to what we should do with the Lord's word, how we should do it, what it's going to take. He said in chapter 2, verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is a commandment from the Lord himself. And let's back that up with scripture, of course. Let's go to 1 uh, Corinthians, ladies and gentlemen. Chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and let's see what it says in verse 37. This is what Paul writes to tell you and me today by a pattern of what Jesus Christ told him to tell you and me. Verse 37 says, If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write on to you are the commandments of the Lord. So what's ever written from Romans to Philemon by Paul that is a direct commandment for you to do something or to observe something, that is a direct commandment from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Because Jesus Christ himself 
Today is our salvation. He is not our pattern. He made Paul our pattern to follow because he warned even the nation of Israel back under the law before the cross in the times past, you should believe everyone that I send. And let's go to that. Let's go to John chapter 13, and let's read this verse. In the book of John chapter 13, verse 20, this is what it says. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me, and he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. So today, if you refuse to acknowledge the things that Paul writes unto you are commandments of the Lord, you are not going to receive Jesus Christ. He said that back in John, chapter 13, verse 20. You're going to deny the finished work of the cross. And see, that's what Christianity does, and that's what Christianity teaches, because Christianity will tell you, Christians, that you have the gospel, the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all the way through the book of Revelation. Everything in between is Jesus Christ as a pattern for your salvation to follow. Because they will run all the way, especially in the book of John, and tell you this is the only book you really need for your salvation. I've heard it from many, many people professing to be Christians and follow the religion of Christianity. But see, that's the Jesus Christ of Christianity telling you that, who I've showed you from Scripture is actually Satan transformed today into the angel of light and using his ministers that he has transformed into the ministers of righteousness <coughs> Excuse me, to promote this great lie that Jesus Christ is your salvation, but he's also your pattern to follow, and Christianity tries to follow the Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry of the gospel of the kingdom and everything written about the gospel of the kingdom to include, to include the books of First and Second Peter, First and Second and Third John, the book of Jude, the book of James, Hebrews, and the book of Revelations, adding also the 13 books of Romans through Philemon. They want it all. And you can't have it all. You can't take the pattern of Jesus Christ that was for the gospel of the kingdom message for those to endure unto the end for the salvation of their souls and to believe in the church of God that Jesus Christ started on his earthly ministry in Matthew chapter 16, which the the Bible called early Christians of the book of Acts followed. Those Christians were not a member of the body of Christ church and never will be because they followed the pattern of their Jesus Christ of the gospel of the kingdom. The body of Christ church today contains no Christians because there is no Christianity in this book. There's no pattern from Christianity for your salvation today. Your salvation lies in the dispensation of the grace of God through faith, yet not of yourselves. And it's a faith that comes from Jesus Christ himself when we are just to believe and we are given that faith. Because look what happened to Paul. Paul is our pattern. Paul gave up everything that he ever knew, what he's ever been taught, what he's ever believed, what he's ever read, and what he's ever told anybody else, and called it dung for the excellency in the knowledge of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Something Christianity and Christians will never do. They will cling to their Christianity and the Jesus Christ of Christianity because Jesus Christ of Christianity has them totally indoctrinated to believe he is their pattern for salvation today. And that turns out to be a very dangerous thing because it becomes a false salvation. Because they're following 
the wrong pattern. And that's the way Satan wants it, and that's his cleverness, and that's his devices at work. He is not the Jesus Christ of Scripture, because the Jesus Christ of Scripture did something with it. He was a pattern for the gospel of the kingdom message in the times past, before the cross. But he rightly divided the gospels. He told Paul, this is the commandment I want your people to do. You're the pattern. You rightly divide the word of truth. And we know from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 13, that the gospel, uh, the uh, rightly dividing the word of truth, the definition of the word of truth is the gospel of our salvation. And that's found in first, uh, the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. And Paul says, it's my gospel. He refers to that, first of all, very early in the book of Romans, where he said, where Jesus Christ will judge all men according to my gospel gospel. And then he says that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead according to my gospel. You won't find anybody saying that in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the book of Acts, Hebrews, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd, 3rd John, James, or Jude, or the book of Revelation. But you'll sure hear it from Paul because it was given to him personally. He got it from Jesus Christ himself, just like Jesus Christ gave his message of the gospel of the kingdom to be a pattern for the nation of Israel for their salvation on his earthly ministry in the flesh to his 12 apostles and the followers of the nation of Israel, the Jews, but most of them rejected it. And then along comes Satan after the cross trying to get people to reject the gospel of the grace of God, the finished work of the cross, where Paul is our pattern, telling them, you need to be a Christian. You need to be in Christianity's religion. You need to believe me, who is the Jesus Christ of Christianity in disguise, that I'm your pattern also today. Very easily for people to fall into this trap, because I'm sure a lot of people don't want to take a little bit of time to not only digest it, but to investigate it. You know, it's funny how people are in the natural uh, sense of things. When they want to invest in something, if it's money, or it's health, career move, whatever, they will look into things, a lot of them, and they will get very detailed. They will do a lot of research to make sure they make the right decision. But they don't do that when it comes to their eternal life. That is immaterial. That doesn't seem to be front and center. They're just going to take the word of their pastor because their pastor is a Christian. He belongs to Christianity. He belongs to a denomination, a non-denomination. He is one of Satan's ministers of righteousness. <coughs> but he's not going to ever say that. But you're comfortable enough to believe whatever it is. He teaches you. Whether it's in his storytelling, what they refer to as a sermon, but Again, sermons aren't even in this book. That word doesn't exist in Scripture. Yet Christianity uses it all the time to teach you the very word of God as they claim it is. And they're very good at it, aren't they? Very smooth talkers. A lot of them have umpteen degrees. A lot of them have PhDs in theology. A lot of them are self-boasters, egotistical maniacs, if you will. They love that standing at the pulpit and having everybody hang on every word that they say. Don't tell me anything different. I've never really met one that didn't. But you see, the difference is when you have a Bible study, I'm never going to give you something of my own accord. I'm only going to give you what Scripture says. Because it's that important. 
It is a balance of your eternal life that hangs. Depending on what it is, you choose to believe. And I guarantee you one thing, ladies and gentlemen, if you view this video and you choose to believe what it is you believe, regardless of what you hear or what is being proclaimed in this video, if you do it on your own, if you make up your mind by going to your pastor, going to your religion of Christianity, going to your local church, going to your fellow Christians, you will make the wrong decision because you will make a decision just like Adam and the woman made in the Garden of Eden. Chapter 3, verse 5. Because they left God out of the equation. Just like you will leave Jesus Christ out of the equation by not going in and reading what it is he really says as the Jesus Christ of Scripture. You see, the Jesus Christ of Scripture rightly divided the word of truth. He had the three divisions of the cross. He said there's the times past, the but now, and the ages to come. And if Paul is our pattern, and Paul told us we must rightly divide the word of truth, we must rightly divide the word of truth to have eternal life. We'll never find it otherwise. It'll be blinded to us because we will, our minds will be blinded by Satan to the true gospel. Please read, if, and I've said this many times in many videos, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, and they are held captive because by Satan at his will because they oppose themselves, lest God would preadventure give them repentance unto the acknowledging of the truth. That is in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25 and 26. Please read them. And if they had despised someone like me making a video and telling you only what it is that Jesus Christ of Scripture says and exposes the lies of the Jesus Christ of Christianity, they will lash, lash out at you. But fear not, because they are not lashing out at you. They are really lashing out at God. And it's in Scripture. If you go to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and read verse 8, and this is what it says. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, someone like me, but God, who has also given unto us his Holy Spirit. And we know he gave us his Holy Spirit because we understand and accept the free gifts of the Spirit of God because we do not study in the wisdom that man's, the way man's wisdom teaches, but the way the Holy Ghost teaches, which is the Holy Spirit of God, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And please read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 15, or excuse me, 12, 13, and 14. And it's right there, plain. As the sun comes up in the east and, and sets in the west. Because it'll always be given to you in the truth. You see, it'll never waver. It'll never change. And it should never change. Christianity changes all the time because you have pastors, the ministers of righteousness, who are Satan's ministers of righteousness, by the way, will tell you, well, this is what I believe. Or they'll say something like, well, I think this is what Jesus Christ is trying to tell us here. I've heard that many, many times. You will never, in all the videos that I've done, in the fourth year now that I'm in this ministry, have I ever said that. And I never will. Because it doesn't matter what I think it says. It doesn't matter what I think Jesus Christ is trying to tell you. It matters what Jesus Christ said. And I leave it at that. And that's the way it should be. Because if you don't, like I said, rightly divide the word of truth and study the word of Jesus Christ the way he commands you to do it, you'll never receive him and you'll never receive the one that sent him. Because you're not receiving the one that Jesus Christ sent as a pattern for your salvation today, who is Paul the Apostle. That is the main difference. And that's why I can do a video and make a statement that the Jesus Christ 
is not a pattern of your salvation today. It just won't fit. But look what Christianity does. And there's many times I've showed you in Scripture what's going to happen to Christianity and its Christians that follow the angel of light that's been transformed into the angel of light who is Satan himself that poses as a Jesus Christ of Christianity. He sure is not the Jesus Christ of Scripture. Because it's two are so opposite. Yet Christianity combines them. Because they refuse to accept the one that Jesus Christ sent to us today as a pattern for our salvation. They would rather cling to the Jesus Christ who they know is salvation. They know salvation is of Jesus Christ. It's in him. But it's not a pattern for us to achieve it today. The pattern has to come through Paul the Apostle. End of story. If it doesn't, you've fallen from grace. You've never received grace. And if you don't receive grace, you'll never receive the grace through the faith that you're saved by. It's impossible. You're going to mix law and grace. And you will have a false salvation. And the saddest thing is, you will not know this until you take your last breath on this earth and all of a sudden you're in hell. Wondering what in the world is going on. And that's not a truer statement to be made. Because you were a part of a worldly religion called Christianity. The most, one of the most powerful the richest and the most followers in this world and most accepted in this world. So yes, you should wonder, what in the world am I doing in hell, living my life as a Christian, believing the Jesus Christ of Christianity for my salvation as my pattern? Well, you can think, not only yourselves, but how about your pastors? How about your local church? How about your fellow Christians? How about your denomination? How about your religion? Even your non-denomination. You can thank all them. They're going to join you. But it's going to come to an individual thing with the suffering that you're going to have to endure. And it will be for eternity. But you see, you don't have to have that. You can follow Paul, who is our pattern for our salvation today, in this dispensation of the grace of God for the doctrine for the body of Christ Church, which is revealed from Romans to Philemon today. You can have that true salvation where in meekness, Jesus Christ will instruct you through his word. And you'll quit opposing yourselves and God would pre-adventure will give you the, repent, the uh, acknowledging on the repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And you will be able to recover yourselves out of the snare of the devil where you are taken captive at his will. And your minds will no longer be blinded because the light of the Jesus Christ who is the image of God will shine upon you. Guaranteed. Because it's the truth. That's what you'll always hear. Because that's what Jesus Christ says. It isn't what I think I believe. It isn't what I think Jesus Christ is telling you. That is what Jesus Christ said. And that is what Jesus Christ himself is telling you through Paul. But again, you have a decision. Do you want to be obedient to the Word of God and be in belief of the Word of God? Or do you want to be in unbelief of the Word of God and in disobedience to the Word of God? Rather to follow your religion of Christianity and the Jesus Christ of Christianity and end up in hell and eventually of the lake of fire. To avoid this, there is a gospel that can save you. 
It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory that which I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And verse 4, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You'll always hear that the same over and over and over again because it is the truth. If it was telling you a lie, it would be changing. Just like Christianity's religion changes things all the time to fit their narrative, their doctrine, their ideologies. Think about that for a moment. Because it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, By grace are ye saved through faith, yet not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. In verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. And the minute you trusted and the minute you believed, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Because you believed the word of truth, which is the gospel of your salvation. In whom you trusted first. That's Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Not in order, but that's what it says. Because you rightly divided the word of truth. You know what the word of truth is. It is the gospel of your salvation. Because that is what the Jesus Christ of Scripture teaches you and commands you to know and follow. Nothing else will do. Everything else is based on a lie. Everything, to include whatever mankind tells you, whatever your preacher tells you when he says, this is what I think Jesus Christ is telling us, or this is what I believe. Ladies and gentlemen, who in the name of everything is decent, do you care what it is other people believe when it comes to your salvation? It shouldn't matter. Because it's your salvation on an individual basis we're talking about. That's what's important. So yes, today Jesus Christ is not your pattern for salvation today. If you think it is, he is. You're lost, you've fallen from grace, and you will spend eternity first in hell. And then the lake of fire. Don't miss your opportunity to make things right before you live your life in eternity in the wrong. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you listening. This is a home Bible study from my home to your home. This is Robert Holler. Thanking you and always remember, no matter what it is you choose to believe, we'll be here. And we'll leave the light on for you.